Steve Luckner with Right Side Broadcasting coming to you with a news alert. Uh, today it was reported that 15 Marines, 15 Marines, Marines were injured and in an AAV training accident fire. So an AAV is an amphibious assault vehicle. Oh, the one thing I forgot to do, of course, is put a photo of it up. So let me do that right now. Thought I'd done everything. There it is. Uh, so that's not the exact one, but that's an example of what the vehicle is. It's an amphibious assault vehicle. It caught fire during a training exercise today at Camp Pendleton in California, and 15 Marines were injured, five of them seriously. This is the third uh, training accident for the Marines in three months. We're going to talk about some of that, some of those details. And also... Um, it's also another accident for the military. So in addition to those three training accidents for the Marines, we've also had two uh, very, uh, you know, very much talked about uh, big accidents with the Navy in the Pacific where two different Navy destroyers over the last few months ran into giant cargo ships and uh, a number of Navy sailors were killed. So. I wonder, you know, maybe maybe the Marines accidents have nothing to do with the Navy accidents. Is this a pattern of, uh, you know, problems throughout the military? Or are these separate issues? I don't know. Maybe you have an opinion on this. Feel free to write in and let me know. You can write in with your comments on this story at at Luckner on Twitter. Uh, that's where I am, at Luckner on Twitter. And then I will, I will get to your comments and read them on the air. But first, I want to go over some of the details of this uh, of this story today and give you some of those details. Maybe you have... And I also want to just make sure you can hear me, which you can. Okay, so let's start by looking at this uh, Marine Times story here. 15 Marines injured after amphibious assault vehicle bursts into flames. So it's a short story. We'll read it by Jeff Shogel. Um, it's been updated with the Marines' medical conditions. Uh, five of the 15 Marines injured Wednesday when their amphibious assault vehicle caught fire are in critical condition, Corps officials said. The Marines are from 1st first, first Battalion, 1st Marines, and the 3rd Assault Amphibian Battalion, said 1st Lieutenant Paul Ganey, a spokesman for the 1st Marine Division. They were conducting a combat readiness evaluation as part of a training exercise at Camp Pendleton, California, when the, AA, when the AAV burst into flames at 9.33 a.m. local time. Eight of the Marines were sent to the burn center at University of California, San Diego Health, where three are listed in critical conditions and five are in serious condition, Ganey said in the news release. So eight of those Marines were very seriously burned. They went to the burn unit. Five are, three are in critical condition and five are in serious condition. Four other Marines were taken to the UC Irvine Medical Center, where two of them are listed in critical condition, and the other two are being treated for an unknown medical condition. So we have a total of five Marines in critical condition. Uh, another Marine is listed in stable condition at Scripps Memorial Hospital, La Jolla, California, and two Marines are being treated for minor injuries at the Naval Hospital, Camp Pendleton, Ganey said. The 1st Marine Division would like to thank the civilian and military emergency personnel who responded immediately to the situation and allowed the injured Marines to receive rapid care, Ganey said. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Marines and their families affected by this incident. The accident is under investigation. Business Insider first reported the incident on Wednesday. Wednesday's incident is the, third, the Marine Corps' third major training accident in as many months. Three Marines were killed on August 5th when an MV-22B Osprey crashed off Australia, and 15 Marines and one sailor were killed on July 10th when their KC-130T crashed in Mississippi. So we have, in July, 15 Marines killed uh, and one, uh, and 15 Marines and one sailor killed in this uh, crash. KC-130T is that a helicopter? I'm going to look it up. It is a extended range tanker. It's a tanker plane. So tanker plane crashes in July, 16 military personnel are killed. Uh, Osprey at aircraft crashes in August. Uh, we have, and then three Marines were killed. And then we have this today, um, uh, this AAV catching on fire. Let me just finish up with the last paragraph here. The two fatal crashes uh, led Marine Commandant uh, Robert Neller on August 12th to order all Marine squadrons to suspend flight operations for 24 hours. Senator John McCain from Arizona called the pause in flight operations the latest example of the readiness crisis that threatens to cripple the U.S. military's advantage over our adversaries. 
And just a quick point about this, we have some more details to give you about this uh, catching on fire, but now I know nothing about AAVs and I don't really know anything about cars for the most part, but it, I find it worrisome that this caught on fire and I'm wondering why wouldn't AAV catch on fire? Is that some kind of uh, problem with the, ma did some part not work? Is this a maintenance issue that shouldn't, I would assume this shouldn't happen, that it shouldn't just catch on fire. So it wasn't hit by, I don't believe it was, from what I, from what it says, when it says caught on fire, that would suggest it's not hit by any kind of, uh, I'm sure there wasn't live fire being directed at it in a training exercise with the Marines. So uh, that's certainly a question I would have is, is why is this thing catching on fire? And um, also, why are all these accidents happening? I would assume this is more de accidents uh, causing deadly, uh, causing death and serious injury than is normal in the Marines. I don't know for sure. I would assume that. So I also wanted to show you. A couple other things here. Again, we're covering this uh, AAV accident where AAV accident where 15 Marines were uh, injured, five in critical condition, eight have uh, serious burns, uh, and uh, so this is not good. And it's the third serious military training accident with the Marines in three months. Now, the Marine Division, they posted on, on the 1st Marine Divis Division Facebook page, they posted an update, and I'm going to read you that in a second. Uh, I do want to say, um, if you want to write in uh, and you have a comment on this, I'd love to hear what you think about this stuff. Maybe you have military experience, or maybe you just have a thought on it. Write to me at at Lookner on Twitter, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Also, to get these uh, breaking news updates, you should, and if you want to know when we're coming on the air and covering breaking news live, you should uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and click the notifications bell. Also, feel free to follow us on, on Facebook because we post updates on Facebook as well, so you can follow us there. And if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, feel free to um, like it on YouTube and, and uh, share it on Facebook. We, we're not a big company. We can't afford to advertise, so uh, you guys doing that really helps spread the word about the videos. So uh, the 1st Marine Division on their Facebook page posted this update. It says, training accident on Marine Corps camp, Base Camp Pendleton. Uh, let's just see if there's anything different here than in the article we just read. 9.33 a.m. PST, amphibious assault vehicle caught fire, land-based training accident on Marines Corps Camp Base Pendleton. Um, the, the information about the Marines is all the same, about the medical conditions is all the same as in the previous article. They might have gotten it from this. Uh, it says toward the bottom here, the amphibious landing vehicle involved in the incident was an assault amphibious vehicle. An AAV is used to transport Marines from the sea to land and has been used in operations since the 1970s. So we have that update. I'm going to check your uh, messages here and see if you have any thoughts on this. So certainly worrying. And again, you know, a, a question I already asked before, but I'll say it again, I have is, it seems like this would be an issue if there are three of these accidents in the Marines, three training accidents in three months with so many people hurt. We had three dying and then 15 Marines dying and a sailor and, and a, somebody else died, died in that accident too. And then also we have 15 injured in this one. So these uh, very big, terrible accidents where people are getting hurt and dying uh, within such a short span. So that would suggest to me that maybe something is up with the Marines. But a different question is, is this in any way related to the issues that with accidents that the Navy has been have, having recently? Is this sort of some kind of military wide issue? Or are the issues at the Marines different of a different nature than those from what's going on at the Navy? I don't know. Maybe you have a thought on this. Thank you to the moderators for moderating the chat tonight, by the way. Okay, I am seeing a message here. Oh, that's not about this. So I won't read that message because it's not about this. But if any, I have another article to show you. But if any of you have any thoughts, uh, I'd really be interested in knowing what you think about this. Uh, write to me on Twitter at Lookner at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. There was another article I want to show you from military.com. Let's see if they have any different updates. So, 
All right, that looks kind of the same, kind of the same, 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 same. So down at the bottom here, they say, uh, the last Class A mishap involving an amphibious assault vehicle was on September 16th, 2013, when, Colonel, when Corporal Nicholas Sell died after ordnance ignited his AAV during a training accident, exercise. Oh, that one caught on fire. I'll have to read about that. Um, after that tragedy, the Marine Corps stopped using its mine clearance system, the MK-15-154. Just weeks ago in August, the Corps rolled out a new version of the system, the MK-154 Mod 1, saying it had additional built-in safety and reliability features. The cause of Wednesday's AAV, AAV fire is not yet clear. So what is this about a couple years ago, four years ago? So this is an article from, from just last month, and it says, After Marine Training Death, Corps debuts Safer Mine Clearance System. So it says, four years after a Marine Corporal was killed when ordnance ignited his amphibious assault vehicle, the Marine Corps is rolling out a safer and more efficient mine clearing system for its Amtraks. Now, I'm just reading down. I'm trying to get some more about this accident here. So apparently, I have no idea if this has anything to do with today's accident, but apparently four years ago, uh, there was an AAV clearing ordinance and uh, I guess clearing some kind of mine or something. I don't know if it was, if it was a non-mine ordinance or just a, it was a mine, but uh, it, um, it somehow, when it was mine clearing, caught on fire because of that. And I don't know if they were doing some kind of training exercise exercise today like that with mine clearing. Could this have been, uh, could the accident today have been a similar one to the one that happened four years ago? And it's interesting to note that just, this is just a few weeks ago where it says this article says the Marine Corps is rolling out this safer and more efficient mine clearing system uh, that will prevent the AAV catching on fire thing that happened four years ago. And then today we have an AAV catching on fire, but it could have had nothing to do with this. So I don't know. Just reading the articles, speculating, don't know. JC writes in, one of our moderators, Steve, this is a very sad accident. My heart goes out to the Marines as an Army combat vet. Those are my brothers. The military vehicles are old. And it's another reason I applaud the president for finally upgrading our military. Hopefully these accidents won't happen as often. God bless the victims and all affected. Thank you, JC. And yes, our sympathies too go out to all these victims and their families and everyone affected by this. I mean, 15 Marines injured, a large number of them seriously, five in critical conditions, eight with serious burns. Uh, that's not a good thing. And they're, and it's like, and they're training, they're not even in combat. I also wanted to see if anybody was tweeting about this and had any updates here or there was any reaction on Twitter. I mean, I see a lot of people reporting the story, but I'm trying to find any kind of new information. But I'm not really seeing it. So anyways, uh, this is a bit troubling that we have this accident and those other marine accidents in the last few months and those Navy accidents going on. And uh, I'd still, you know, speaking of the Navy accidents, I still haven't really heard a good explanation as to why they happened. Um, I don't believe that's like a full explanation has been released yet, if I'm right. I've, I've read some things talking about people getting fired. I know some people were fired. I believe like the three people in charge of the, the first ship that got in the, the, the Navy accident several months ago were fired. But what I haven't heard is sort of in the in detail, like here is exactly why these two destroyers got uh, in, into accidents with cargo ships. Exactly why, not sort of general well, somebody wasn't doing their job kind of thing, which I'd be interested to hear. Uh, and uh, I'd also would be interested in knowing why this accident today happened. So, although maybe it's some technical thing, I wouldn't understand that's certainly possible. I stand with Trump sent me a link to a different article, which we'll see if it says anything different than the ones we just read. Thank you for sending that, I stand with Trump. 
By the way, the, uh, let's see. I'll, actually, let me just go to this right now. Here's the one from Stars and Stripes. At least five Marines in critical condition after Camp Pendleton training accident. I'm going to quickly scroll through it. All the all this all this stuff looks the same. Oh, here's a new thing at the end. An amphibious assault vehicle, or AAV-7, is a 30-ton armored vehicle designed to carry Marines and their equipment from Navy amphib amphibious assault ships onto land and into combat. The tracked vehicles known to Marines as Amtraks feature a large boat hull-shaped front end that helps them maneuver through water. They can carry up to 28 Marines at a time. So we can look and see the front end there, the boat hull-shaped front end in this picture here. Um, okay, so I think, you know, so that's, that's, that's what's going on. Uh, that's the latest we know about this marine accident. We want to come on and give you uh, an update about that. We are, uh, you know, concerned, as I'm sure a lot of you are, uh, a lot of sh uh, as, a, as I'm sure a lot of you are, about the accident and about these accidents and uh, hope they can figure out what's going on with them. Our thoughts definitely are with all the people um, hurt in this accident and everybody they're connected to. And, uh, if you, again, to repeat, if you want to know when we're coming on with these breaking news updates, subscribe to us on YouTube. Click the notifications bell as well. And also, uh, you can uh, write, follow us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at RSB Network. And I will post on my Twitter updates about this accident uh, if I get them later tonight at Lochner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. So feel free to follow me there. And um, also, we are um, viewer supported here at Right Side Broadcasting. We can't stay on the air without donations. That's what keeps pays our expenses and keeps us on the air. So if you do like our coverage of uh, breaking news and uh, different events, I uh, hope you consider making a donation. If you'd like to donate, you can always donate in the YouTube chat room by clicking on the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. And also, you can um, uh, always go to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. Okay, uh, I, I, we got to your messages. Uh, thanks for writing in, JC. And uh, I stand with Trump. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we're going to sign off for now. Oh, let me go to full. But uh, as I mentioned, I will post on Twitter if I hear anything new about this. And uh, we hope to see fewer of these accidents in the future. Uh, and we'll be on, if there's breaking news later tonight, you know, we'll be on the air. So keep an eye out for Right Side Broadcasting. Uh, but for now, thank you again to the moderators, uh, Lynn Jean, JC. Thank you to everybody for watching and for sending in stuff. And uh, for now, I am Steve Luckner for Right Side Broadcasting, wishing everybody a good night, and uh, we will see you soon.